Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Eric Coffin here. I'm uh, at the May 2018 version of the Mental Investor Forum. Uh, I'm here with uh, one of the exhibitors and also a company that I follow in the HRA newsletters. Uh, Patrick Downey is the CEO of Orzone Gold. Orzone is developing rapidly uh, a large gold resource in Burkina Faso. Uh, you really sort of turned things around a bit when you came in, Patrick. I mean, you've, you've changed the focus of the company. You're pushing things ahead quite quickly. You're very, very close to feasibility study now, right? A, a new one. Yes, uh, we'll be publishing that feasibility study before the end of June. I would think either the third or fourth week in June it should be ready and um, all going to plan. It's been uh, very well executed by Leica Podium and the other team members. We've been really happy with it, so um, expect to see that at the end of June. And the reason for this new feasibility, just give us a thumbnail of, you know, why, why did you feel the need to completely update the feasibility? Well, when we looked at the work that was done and the test work that was done, which was quite extensive, we realized that we could completely simplify that flow sheet. And uh, we brought in a group in to review that to make sure that we were on the right track before we really dragged the engineers in on board. Uh, got that uh, reviewed, it did some more test work just to verify it, and it just simplified the project. So the previous capex was around about 260 million, and we expect to be 100 million plus below that. Uh, it would improve the recovery. Uh, so instead of having a combined heap leach and uh, tank leach, we will have total tank leach. So that, uh, and we think that it will decrease the overall unit operating cost per ton because we're focusing totally on the free digging aspect of it. So it's no drill and blast, local contractors, small fleet. Simplified things that come out of this flow sheet from that, and, and it, people look at it and go, wow, that's quite ingenious, was normally when you back up to the front end with a truck, you have a grizzly, you, you dump onto the grizzly, you have to reverse up to it, get spotted, and, and then move on. Uh, we looked at this because it's all light truck fleet, no rocks, so you don't need the grizzly at that angle. Flat grizzly like the green business, mm -hmm. so the truck drives in, dr dumps and drives on. So our cycle time is down by about a minute per truck, which is huge when it comes to cost. Mm. So things like that have come out of it where we've been extremely pleased with how it's gone, so I'm looking forward to getting it into the public market. Now one thing that happened quite recently, um, you guys just attracted a a very big strategic shareholder that wrote a, a very, well, a couple of them really, I guess, that mm -hmm. they both wrote very large checks and just completed a very big financing that that's probably enough to, it, it's, it probably deals with a lot of your equity component, I would think. Yeah, it does. So we, we, uh, we talked to a number of groups on, on that side. Um, they all did their due diligence. Um, they all put a proposal into us. Um, they were all extremely close in terms of what we wanted, but we, we selected RCF. Uh, they've got a very, very good name in the business. It was a long eight week post of the, the, what they put in um, due diligence. Uh, so we wanted that. We wanted these guys crawling all over this project, looking at it from the resources, the reserves, the mining, the mining cost, the capital cost, the operating cost, the mine life. Because number one, they're a long-term shareholder, but number two, it verified to us that we were on the right track, doing it the right way. And um, so that was um, executed um, about a month ago. We also brought in, which I think is significant, a bank out of Burkina Faso. And they wanted significantly more equity, but we didn't have the room for them to put them in. Um, two things there. They're a big debt lender in the business, not well known, but locally and with mining projects in West Africa and oil and gas projects. Can, can they handle something of, of a Bombori scale? Absolutely. Okay. They, they would handle it all. Okay. But we want to syndicate it, you know, and um, so we likely will syndicate it with, you know, two or three, maybe four banks. Um, it's not a huge uh, debt component. But if we do it right and we have the right numbers here, I think what will come out of it is that our hedging will be extremely small. Okay. So, um, That'd be and, good. yeah, our equity component will be small, but we've got two lead orders already. Right. RCF yeah. and Corus Bank. Okay. And Corus want a bigger position the next time around. Okay. So, uh, we think that, you know, the path to, to uh, construction is reasonably well laid out for us. Okay. And, what, what do you think your timelines are here, roughly? I mean. Well, we had a long talk 
about that with the board and with RCF. And so with this money, what we're doing now is we will roll straight from feasibility into detail engineering. We're already started detail engineering on, on a number of the front end uh, uh, infrastructure works. We start the relocation of the two main villages. Mm -hmm. So they're moved and that's all signed off by the way. It's just actually the construction of the houses and the physical relocation. Right. So that's done. We're getting the bids in for that probably around the first week in June. They're out for bid right now. And then we'll start that construction more or less when the rainy season is finalizing itself so that we it's easier construction for us. We've got all the water wells, all the systems in place for that. Mm -hmm. So we, we would expect by having this money, we take back our construction by about eight months. Okay. So from an NPV point of view, mm -hmm. that's a big, big plus for us. So um, that's something that, uh, you know, that an RCF are driving us, by the way. They're, they're, right. They, they want to keep moving. So right. and, they've got and a timetable. They've got a timetable and they love the project. I can tell you they are very, very high on the project. And um, they also see huge upside in the sulfides beneath it mm -hmm. and how we pot potentially can integrate that as we move forward. And uh, so that's very uh, uh, pleasing for us as well. Okay, and I mean, I'll ask you the question you always ask a company at this stage of development. Um, the right offer from the right group came along, you're happy to take it, but clearly you guys are gonna push forward to build this thing on your own. Absolutely, I mean, you know, you have to do what's right for your shoulders. The thing about us as a group, board and management, we're very heavily invested in this company. You know, we own millions of shares. And, you know, uh, we if the right offer came with the right group, and we had a pretty good record of doing that with the right groups, right. we will do it. But at the end of the day, you have to be prepared to build the project. And we are prepared to build the project. We're in the hiring mode right now. We're seeing some great people because of the location of the project. Bombori, at the end of the day, when the new ring road is finished in Waga, will be an hour's drive from the capital. Hmm. Most mines are six, seven on dirt roads. We're an hour on a, on a paved highway. Right. So people are extremely interested in joining the company. Right. And when we brought in that financing with an RCF, the resumes came flooding in. Right. So we can build it, but yeah. if it's the right group and it, it makes sense for us, of course we will. We're not doing anything at this point in time because we have to know what our true value is when the feasibility study is published. And, right. But as things move forward, and, and we, will, we will entertain people coming to look at it. Not everybody willy-nilly, it'll be select, select groups. Okay, I mean, there you have it, folks. I mean, Bombori, Feasibility study in a month. I mean, I've been saying for some time now. I mean, I, I consider this one of the most financeable development stage gold projects out there. Obviously, RCF agreed. They, they, they and Coors just wrote $45 million in checks. Uh, I don't think they're going to have any difficulty uh, financing this once the feasibility is out. One thing that I should remind people that we, we forgot to mention is this is already fully permitted. That's all done. Absolutely. It's, it's, once the feasibility and the detailed engineering is going, it's time to get the shovels out, it's good to go. We just had the mining contractors all on site. We've got five bids in, they all love it. They all want the, they all want the project. Right. It's a great story. I mean, it's one, you, it's one you want to be on if you're looking for a project that has the potential near term to develop into a fully financed, very profitable gold mine, or alternatively where you and Patrick and everybody else gets taken out by an acquirer. I, th I think it's a great story. It's one of the best gold developers out there. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Absolutely. Good to see you again. Yeah.